we all know that in societies which are under the influence of capitalism, uh, glamorous, charming and seductive sources are increasing rapidly and the object of desire are everywhere. Bentley in Istanbul, uh, Porsche in Moscow, uh, and some other objects maybe in Sarajevo as well. And with the help of charm globalization, the world is no longer a big planet uh, for some of us. Is it good or bad? We have to think about that. On the other hand, today's time-serving relationships and uh, a new kind of communication techniques are releasing the sense of place and the uh, distinctive qualities of locality and the notion of belonging to the space, uh, which is very important in my opinion, but it's losing their importance by, by day by day. Uh, we have to say that this is a climate of all that is solid melts into air, as Marshall Berman stated ingeniously. And no matter in which geography, sparkling, flashy and dashy high-rises emerge as the, uh, as the new symbols of the cities. Of the record, most of the time, investors are using those symbols as their weapons and show off and I have to say that some kick-ass architects, like we are, are transforming to be their agents. I think that it won't be wrong to consider this situation as an epiphany of neocolonialism. Okay, now, uh, let me tell you a bit about the current sociological, uh, sociopolitical climate in Turkey. The government of Erdogan was in power since more than 11 years and to speak honestly, they made a big move during the last decade and the country prospered very rapidly. And the construction sector was somehow the principal engine of uh, the regime's economic uh, policy. But on the other side, we, we have to know, we, or we all know that it's a, it's a kind of uncanny situation. Especially after 2005, and especially in Istanbul, every single day a brand new project came to the market. Without any master plan, all the vacancies has been the subject of a, of a delirium manipulated by the government. The third airport terminal, the third bridge, or the others are gigantic projects which are under construction for the moment. Some of you may know Istanbul very well. It's a, it's a metropolis with about 15 million. And the northern part is relatively empty, but full of water reservoirs and forests. And uh, in my opinion, they serve as elixirs of the city. Uh, but from right to left, I call them the three musketeers, the third bridge, third airport, and our very clever dick project, Can Channel Istanbul, are joining forces to destroy this ecological system for the moment. And no one should be so smart to guess that lack of water will be the biggest issue in the city in a very near future. In EAA, as one of the largest scale architectural offices in Turkey, we are facing this situation very frontally, but even in this atmosphere, instead of being affirmative or, let's say, a kind of current capitalist systems <coughs> agent, without questioning what's going on, we believe that a producing architect should take a very critical and very niche position and undertake a more opponent role. Even in this atmosphere, instead of being defined only as producing well-designed or very good-looking buildings, we consider our practice as an activity about rising fresh ideas by learning from people from roots, from tradition, different contexts, sometimes even wind, sound, rain, dialectics, and of course, some new techniques. And in our work, very roughly, I can say that human life and the city are two main fields of the study, and so potentials of public benefits and sensitivity about the context are the main issues of this practice. We believe that uh, this situation charged the architect with a responsibility which is much more important and definitely more complicated, complicated than being an unconcerned producer of image industry or a mediator of the society of spectacle. 
Now I want to give you some brief information about my professional background. By doing that I'm aiming to interchange a first impression about Turkey's formative years. Then I'll try to forward you some clue uh, about current sociological, or political, urban and architectural context in Turkey, in Istanbul. After that I will present you some projects which we have, we have been realized lately in this specific context and finally I will describe one of our projects more deeply as a, as a distinctive example of, I, of my of our architectural approach and uh, position uh, on, the, on the intellectual field in Turkey. As you may know, Istanbul was the capital city of Ottoman Empire during nearly 500 years and Atatürk, who is the founder of the Republic, decided to move governance center to the central part of Anatolia and uh, assign Ankara as the new capital in 1922. And I can say that it was a quite critical decision. As you can see, uh, this is a photograph from the 30s of Ankara. <coughs> this new capital was looking like a big village uh, rather than a real city in those days. My mother is from Bursa and my father is from Ankara, but they both have studied architecture in Istanbul, in Istanbul Technical University. And Right after their marriage, they moved to Ankara in 1961 because of my father's military service. Mm -hmm. in, in one sense, uh, the new Ankara was the fortress of republicanism and one of the most distinctive symbols of Turkish westernization. On the other hand, the city was dealing with a very funny kind of urbanization because executives of the government were struggling to transform people's sociological situation. They were trying to create a new class of urbanites from a uh, faction of peasants, let's say. And it was an ironic dilemma for the young republic. And meanwhile, my parents were established their first office, Arolat Architects, in Ankara, and were participating to architectural competitions in, in order to get a job. And finally, they did it. After some prizes, they won the first prize in the competition of Zonguldak Hospital in the beginning of 1963. I came to this earth just after this victory. And uh, as a result of this win, they were having a sense of self-confidence and they have participated to some other competitions as well. They were quite successful and had the chance to see some projects as completed buildings. But life was not easy for them, and the, the state was their unique client, and to tell you the truth, it was not a convenient one. After seven years of struggle or hard work, they moved to Istanbul in 1968, uh, and it was, of course, a much more vibrant, dynamic, and crowded city. In those days, social problems and political fights were standing out, and the spirit of uh, 68 was up and doing. And uh, at the same time, the amount of private sector's investments were increasing day by day. Rather than state hospitals, this time a variety of private investment projects were on board of Arolat Architects office in Istanbul. In 1986, I graduated from the University Mimar Sinan and went to United States. I found a job in architectural office in Washington, D.C. And after a very pleasant and profitable year in Georgetown, once again, I was in Istanbul and joined to my parents' office. And it was the beginning of my 17 years of partnership with them. As a brief summary, I can easily say that Arulat Architects was my principal university, but within 17 years of struggle, I felt that I should graduate from there. And architecture itself, itself was not our main field of problem, but as two different generations, we had some different imaginations about positioning the office in the market. Gonja Pasholar was one of my colleagues in, in Arolat Architects. In 2004, we had founded Emre Arolat Architects together with her and moved to one, one of my friend's office for a short term. Uh, I can say that she was a hard worker. You can see that she was sleeping on the table in the office. Uh, I was very lucky one more time. The wind was coming from behind and uh, we were having lots of work at that time. Most of them were quite challenging. And uh, I have to say that we were becoming more and more uh, sensitive about context and situation. At that time we were six architects. 
And I was thinking that it was an ideal scale for an architecture of six architects. After a year of sojourning in the, in the office of my friend, we moved to a much larger office in Etiler. It was 2000, 2005 and we were about 25. And I was thinking that it was my borderline. How could I guess that we would be 100 just after three years?